Hello, I'm Bob Trout. I've got a story here that I think is big, really big, because it's bound to have a terrific impact on business. I'm talking about a new market, a big new market, millions upon millions of new prospects with $15 billion to spend. That's right, I said $15 billion. That's a lot of money, isn't it? The surprising thing is that it's a fresh market, still full of opportunities. It grew up so fast, got so big in a hurry, that few of us realize its scope. Now, these days, nobody's likely to pass up chances to sell. And yet right here in our own front yard, there's a neglected market. There's money waiting to be spent. To get the story of this market, to be able to tell you the secret of selling the Negro, we did a lot of digging. We talked to leading businessmen, the customers, and the salesmen. We went to Washington, D.C. We set up cameras and other key points around the nation. And out of this all, there emerged a story, the story of a new market. Yes, this is the market we're talking about, the new Negro family. Their name is Wells or Wilson, Smith or Brown or Alexander or Breen. They live in Chicago, in Atlanta or New York, in Detroit, St. Louis, Los Angeles, any one of a thousand cities and towns. All over the country, families such as this are enjoying new prosperity. They have new interests, new standards of living, a buying power they've never enjoyed before. They're good prospects for practically all types of goods and services. All too often, though, they are overlooked prospects. Why? Because of some good, valid reason? No. They're overlooked because of mistaken ideas. Because of out-of-date ideas about how the Negro lives and how he buys. The truth... So 1954, it seemed like the Negro... Like, I, I, were they lying to us? All these fucking war stories from fucking black people that are like 50 years old and shit. Like they were chased around by the Klan 24-7 and shit. They were fucking tipping their head when they seen a white man in public and getting called boy and smacked over the head with hats and shit. Did you hear this from fucking sun words of the 55 and shit? This is 1954. See, like it was pretty good, right? That was Chicago, yeah. though. It was different for them up there. Well, they all moved there, um, which kind of like shows you why uh, things are the way they are now in Chicago. They ruined it, but they did move there. They had no problem moving to Chicago. Yeah, they definitely ruined Chicago. Yeah. Well, well wasn't it like after white flight, then you had all the co- all the competent blacks moved out, and you were left with basically the well, the, the worst, so the worst. Yeah, the dregs. Yeah. Well, yeah, but salute Abe the Hunter. He says, we are outliers because we know our history. For example, my family was free 100 years before slavery was lifted. Oh, you you, you goddamn um, Creole or something, man? Or, or you explain that to us, Abe the Hunter. You goddamn Creole. Um... Yeah, man. Um, salute to Doug Chunks. He says, one of these days, it's on. Drinks, 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 drinks. Perhaps we can coordinate it. Yeah, man. You and um, you and we gotta get brown sugar. Um, she don't cam up, but she got at least cam up the um bottle that she's sipping on, man. Brown sugar, t- go go get you some bottles and change. You don't have to drink nothing hard, man. Get you a goddamn um, a goddamn what? What's the well, well, according to the check, I drink forties. So, yeah. um. Moscato, man. <laughs> you know you drink Moscato, man. You 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 a black chick? You drink Moscato, man. Get you a glass of Moscato, man, for Doug Chunks, man. Yeah. All right, I will. Yeah, man. One day, man. One day, man. Um, yeah. Salute to Doug Chunks, man. Um. This is this hey, is curious. Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm a fan of brown sugar. I, sorry, I, I didn't mean any disrespect. I'm sorry, I, I curse you out. 
You accept my apology? Uh, yes, of course I do. All I was right. just wondering, like, <clears throat> are you? Do you have natural hair, or do you have a weave? Are you thinking cuss out again, sir? Damn! I just said I was. I'm not. Smart. This how y'all get cuss out. <laughs> I'm just asking a question. Like, do you? I'm just saying. I mean, why does? Why do you, like why do you care? Why do you care? You ain't my I'm man. Just curious. You ain't I'm my man. Curious. You ain't my why man though. Why do you care so much? But you man. ain't my man. Yeah, hey, bro, you I don't wake so up much. to you every morning. So why do you care how I'm wearing my damn hair? I don't even care I'm up. So why do you really care about how I'm wearing my hair? Right. Don't ask how your woman hair. got her hair? If you got a woman, is how she wearing her she hair? Is it her a, comb? She wears. She has extension. Like a, oh, okay. natural hair, but she has extension. Oh, okay. And what she is? She black or white? She she's a glider. Y'all hear that? This white woman got weave on her head. And brown sugar, he I got mean, your yeah, goat. I, mean, I didn't. I was just curious. Though. I'm just saying. Right. He got your goat. He got my what? Your goat. He he got you to uh to react. Oh, okay. I'm not trying to get her to react. I, I didn't think that was going to be disrespectful. I didn't mean to be that. I didn't think that, that was going to be disrespectful. Think, yeah, that didn't sound like a, a, a warranty at all. That bro, so you're like, well, where'd that come from? Because, you know, last time I was on here, you had dude, he kept having that conversation about weaves and weeks and all this stuff. That, mm. uh, that black guy. I don't even remember. Well, I don't even oh. know about that. But well, the reason why I said it is because, um, you know, like in Black Panther and all that, they're all like, "Hey, we got to start." I, I don't that. even like that yeah, damn movie, and they all were ugly, bald headed. Yeah, yeah, okay. Should have right. put a wig on their head. Yeah, man, the door Milan's man. Shout out to door Milan's man. Oh, they're overlooked because of mistaken ideas, because of out of date ideas about how the Negro lives and how he buys. The truth of the matter is that the Negro lives pretty much the same as other folks. He buys pretty much the same way, too. But just the same, a lot of old doubts and opinions keep cropping up over and over again. Ah, oh, I don't like to do business with Negroes. They're drifters. You can't keep track of them. <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> I mean, was he wrong about that? Was he wrong about that? <laughs> I'm gonna get the fuck off. I can't do this no more. These wow. folks pissing me off. Oh, they tell me section. Yeah, no. the chat. They just so disrespectful. Wow. No, y'all hate me that much. Why? <laughs> you just you. it's funny when you get mad. Y'all really would never get on a panel with me and talk to me because y'all are afraid of me. You know, I would cuss y'all dumb ass out. I'm not afraid of you. I ain't talking about you. <laughs> and what, what do you mean by drift? Brown Sugar has a lot of good points to make every time I listen to her. I think she has a lot of good points to make. I agree with her most of the time. Thank you. Moss, you know what he means. They, they ain't going to pay their bills. Oh, I mean, that's well, well considering you know, who I am, that, that's why it sounded strange to me. Boy, stop. You ain't perfect. I know I'm not perfect, but I didn't understand what he meant by drifters. That's all. He means he means that some people be taking shit out on layaway and shit, and then they still won't come in your fucking store knowing they got a fucking bill and still get some more shit. Oh. Just the same, a lot of old doubts and opinions keep cropping up over and over again. Uh, I don't like to do business with Negroes. They're drifters. You can't keep track of them. Yes, although a lot of people think that way, the truth is that one out of every three Negro families living in cities today owns its own home. That fig one out of three Negro families living in cities owns their own home. So that's 33%. That's what the Asians are now. The Asians are 31% in California of owning their own home. The now it's one is one out of 10. Now it's one out of 10. Now it's one out of 10. It's, it's, it's that's just California. that's proof y'all are the original Asians. Yeah, exactly. We were the model minority, man. Yeah, we um, was. Yeah. But but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's still gonna be regression to the mean. Like this was. I, I can't explain this. I'm sure that it it gotta be some something to explain that because I think DNA is constant, man. I don't think that you can overcome DNA today owns its own home. That figure comes directly from the United States Bureau of Census. Uh, maybe so, but 
Negroes are poor credit risks. Not more of a credit risk than any other group. Actually, the Negro home buyer meets his payments faithfully, often more faithfully than other race groups in the same economic level. That's the in Wow. I bet that was the is, case this, is this a Juice Crew video? No, I, I bet this is the case right. because they had... <laughs> Go ahead. I, I this this getting, they're getting because, juicier by the by the minute. I think this was a case because they felt like they 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 had something they, they had something to lose, so they they wanted to work as much as they could to keep on what keep to what they keep on what they had. They, I don't they know, man. I don't know, man. I I just don't know, man. Um, salute the salute the battle elf, man. He says for McCoy. Oh, that's for another person in the chat. Yeah, salute to you, McCoy. Salute the battle elf, man. Battle elf, um, miss. Um, so he says this for Milf, Milf Mandy, man. Salute to you, battle elf, man. Um, wish Wicked was up here, man. But Wicked, Wicked running scared, man. Um, but you know. It is what it is. Um, salute to Battle Elf, man. Um, but I, I, I something ain't right, man. I'm with Fisherman on this one. I mean, you just something. I think they'll they'll reveal it, even unwittingly or wittingly. Its own home. That figure comes directly from the United States Bureau of Census. Uh, maybe so, but Negroes are poor credit risk. Not more of a credit risk than any other group. Actually, the Negro home buyer meets his payments faithfully, often more faithfully than other race groups in the same economic level. That's the information we got from people who ought to know, the National Association of Real Estate Boards. Well, maybe, but I've always heard that Negroes buy shoddy, poor quality merchandise. No, it's just the other way around. According to leading researchers, in proportion to population and income, Negroes buy more quality products than any other comparable United States. In proportion to quality and income, what does that mean? I guess like they can afford it. Affordable quality. He's, no. he's just saying compared to other groups, they spend money on higher quality stuff. We're not cheap. So, like, if I have 50 grand and brown sugar has 50 grand, she's going to spend it on some expensive-ass weave, and I'm Great. not. And you're going to spend on a, a dick pump. Oh, my goodness. I think so. No, it's just the other way around. I think the reason why they said that they are you know, higher and like paying back their loan or whatever, is because they might be much more scrutinized than the other. Because back then there were probably what ninety five percent gliders. So out of the out of the the sons that were given the loan, they were probably much highly more scrutinized, and they knew they would be able to pay them back. So that mm. that's why it kind of skews the numbers. It's like that, I, like like that more to prove. No, he's saying that the the the, the pool of sudden. People who got loans were from the highest of the high. Oh, with, right. You know gotcha. Yeah. I understand now. Yeah. Around. According to leading researchers, in proportion to population and income, Negroes buy more quality products than any other comparable United States group. You see, there are a lot of confused notions about the Negro country. Love them some red bones back to these cat Can you blame them? I mean, I'm just saying. I've noticed it. Like, I don't, I don't. It doesn't make me much difference. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> I just notice it every month. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you yeah. notice that, right? Yeah. It just, it just is what it is. Summer. But when you dig right down and find out about them, they just don't hold water. Negroes own homes. Did I they meet one? their payments faithfully. They buy good it brands of mer merchandise. So why let a lot of old-fashioned oh, ideas okay. hurt profits? Yeah. Take a look at the real facts. Here in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, some amazing facts and figures about this new market have been uncovered. For a first-hand report, we would like to take you directly to the United States Department of Commerce to hear this story from the Secretary of Commerce himself. 
Here is the Honorable Sinclair Weeks, the Secretary of Commerce of the United States. In the Department of Commerce, we are constantly alert to trends that mean a healthier national economy, better business for the nation as a whole. Recently, we have been interested in a rising young market, one that represents a huge potential for goods and services. I'm referring to the new Negro market. The tremendous buying power of this group is backed, of course, by an increased earning power. The average Negro family's income is at a record high. In fact, since 1939, it has increased more than the average income of all other Americans. Just take a look at a few figures. An official Department of Commerce report shows that at least one third of the Negroes living in cities earn from two to five thousand dollars a year. Now let me do my inflation calculator, man. What's that? Nineteen fifty-four. But they said two thousand. How much is two thousand dollars in nineteen fifty-four? I'm gonna guess about forty-six k. $2,000 is $22,554 now. So 5000 so Poverty for a family. So 5000 he said between two to 5000 5000 is 56387 um, so the the average Negro made between twenty two and fifty six thousand in 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 nineteen fifty four in the cities. I mean that's not bad if you consider um, what good. they came from, what they came from. Like you know what I'm saying, like like what you would what you would expect. It's probably more than what you would expect. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. What do what do you think? you you think that's you think that's still poverty, right, fisherman? 22k for a family of four is I'm pretty well no it's, it's a little family. above it's a little above poverty yeah okay so the Negroes is doing Negroes is just out of poverty okay today the average Negro wage earner brings home a paycheck four times larger than the one he collected in 1939 as a whole the Negro market has a total income of about 15 billion dollars every year. And after taxes, Negro families still have many billions of dollars to spend. Here is a buying power that cannot help but have a tremendous effect on our national economy and on business prosperity in general. When these dollars are spent for a wide range of goods, services, and employment, business everywhere is bound to feel the impact. This new buying power has resulted in a class Negro market, a profitable, above-average income group of consumers. For example, the nation's largest newspaper and magazine research organization, Daniel Starch and staff, reports these significant figures. More than 51% of the readers of Ebony Magazine have a record player in their homes. Almost 64% own a television set. And almost 78% enjoy the convenience of an electric refrigerator. It is also a well, that's not nothing to shake a stick at, though, because in those days, these were not common items. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that. A son, a son man, he's going to have the cool shit. Like, we're going to have the, the iPhone. Like, we, like, every son man I know, their phone, you're like, God damn, that's your phone? You feel bad because you're like, this phone? Fuck tarts got this fucking like thousand dollar phone, and I'm walking around with this goddamn LG and shit. And his tennis shoes, like $330 for his tennis shoes, his belts like $150. You know what I'm saying? He's got a fucking um state of the art game console. Whatever he listens to his music in his fucking state of the art beats by Dre. So yeah, Sun Man, I will say that. Sun Man that you would never think. Have things have the coolest shit, even today. What do you think about that, Brown Sugar? I think so. I'm sorry, I was in the chat. What you say? 
No, I just think Sunman. I believe that Sunman, because these items that he talked about, a refrigerator, a record player, and shit like that, were very. Everybody didn't have that in 1954. My daddy had all that growing up. Yeah, I'm and sure. And my mama did too. Yeah, but 1954, you ain't that old. You, you, your daddy now, had this. Yeah. Now he. Now he wasn't that old. He was he wasn't even born, shoot. But when he in the sixties, he had everything. Yeah, some people have. I believe this that some people have all the cool shit. It's bound to feel the impact. This new buying power has resulted in a class Negro market, a profitable, above average income group of consumers. For example, the nation's largest newspaper and magazine research organization, Daniel Starch and staff reports these significant figures. More than 51% of the readers of Ebony Magazine have a record player in their homes. Almost 64% own a television set. And almost 78% enjoy the convenience of an electric refrigerator. It is also a fact, and this is from the magazine The Food Field Reporter, that Negroes spend almost $3 billion a year for food alone. Per capita, they buy more cosmetics, drugs, and toiletries than anyone else in the country. Uh, this is still <laughs> us today. <laughs> Ain't nothing changed. Yeah. We like to be entertained. We like to look good. I mean... Well, something's changed. Now they, you know, uh, they steal it. Yeah, but we, we don't... We don't oh, yeah. It. Everybody's stealing. They can get away with it. But we wasn't worried about like wealth, like savings and shit. Like we was worried about looking good and being entertained. That's where your money goes. That's why you can't buy a fucking house. But they own their house, right? These black people. One out of one out of three. So third thirty three percent, which is good, own their house, yes. Which is very good. However, that next generation, you don't have nothing to pass down to them because you spent it all on fucking 1954 version of weave and shit. The magazine, The Food Field Reporter, that Negroes spend almost $3 billion a year for food alone. Per capita, they buy more cosmetics, drugs, and toiletries than anyone else in the country. And their children are better educated, too, because since 1930, enrollment in Negro colleges is up 2,500%. But really, to recognize the importance of this class Negro market, we must realize that something has been happening economically in our country. Yeah, People are on the move. The population is shifting. The makeup of metropolitan populations today is different than it was just a few short years ago. To give you a better idea of what we mean, we set up several cameras, candid cameras, in a number of shopping locations. Take a look at these shoppers. Notice what a large proportion of them are Negroes. What's the reason? It's simply this. Negro families are moving into the cities where there are more job opportunities. Here they find occupations with more prestige and security, jobs that pay more money. As a result, Negro families today often make up the largest part of central city consumer prospects. A shoe store in Chicago's Loop, for example, reports that more than 50% of its customers are Negroes. A shoe store reports that 50% of their customers are Negroes. There's some woman like she about to whoop that glider woman ass for uh, letting their door hit her. <laughs> Notice what a large proportion of them are Negroes. What's the reason? It's simply this. Negro families are moving into the cities where there are more job opportunities. Here they find occupations with more prestige and security, jobs that pay more money. As a result, Negro families today often make up the largest part of central city consumer prospects. A shoe store in Chicago's Loop, for example, reports that more than 50... <laughs> Yeah, that's sister, man. You know that's that white sister, lady? That's, that white lady almost. Boy. Karen, original Karen, man. The first Karen. Sister with that goddamn door, man. You ain't, you ain't shit, man. Salute to um, boy Kachina, man. 
boy Kachina coming through with the four, 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 four. I'm typing this on my LG. <laughs> Peace to you and the nation. Yeah, man. And a goddamn son, man, with a goddamn IQ of 54. And his pants hanging off his ass. Got a fucking iPhone, whatever the fuck the latest one is. And a goddamn $300 Gucci belt. LG makes a good phone, though. Yeah, for like a exactly. for like a budget phone, I had one. I beat the shit out of it, and it lasts forever. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I Samsung. Be. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Boy Kachita, man. Um, watch this Karen hit this black lady with this door, man. Look at this, this is Karen. I did it for somebody called Rashad Richie. A shoe man. store in Chicago's Loop. Rashad Gordon. Ritchie, man, Apple. look at this. Report See, that shit ain't right, Rashad. She was like, she was like, damn, bitch. <laughs> yeah, man, the fuck? They often make up the largest part of Central City consumer prospects. A shoe store in Chicago's Loop, for example. And then she looked at her funny when she, she could have held that fucking door. Did she come in and rub her hair, make sure her hair lay? Yeah, man. Reports that more than 50% of its customers are Negroes. In another case, a drugstore located at a transfer point in a non-Negro neighborhood finds that its Negro customers total 25%. The trend is plain. The new Negro families today are moving into more populated areas, to the cities, where there are more stores, more buying opportunities. Since 1940, in San Francisco alone, the Negro market has increased by 89%. See how that's working. <laughs> in Chicago, by 81%. Houston, Texas, 45%. Philadelphia, 50%. Yikes. <laughs> these, these are all the cities with the highest murder rates in the country. And they were founded, they were started by the actual, the good Negroes. The good, so I talk about regression to the mean. The good Negroes came up there and then and they just, listen, man, we can't keep this shit going, man. We can never keep some shit going, man. We always fuck it up. The impact of this new buying force is so tremendous that actually in 14 major yeah, United States markets... Yeah, all the worst cities. Yeah, yeah every all, single one of those sucks. Every city is got the highest crime rate among black people. Philadelphia, Baltimore, Memphis. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Birmingham. <laughs> Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. I it's mean, like, LA crazy. Wow. Wow. We, yeah, we, we fuck everything up, man. We, we, that's why I said, man, I don't believe, like, you said this is Juice Crew inspired, Tristan, man. I don't think, I think so. I, I think the content of this video, like, the way they're framing this is Jewy. <laughs> And uh, some of the Jewy. chats that these were some of the chats that these are major manufacturing cities as well. Mm. Yeah, they manufacture crime. Yeah, exactly. I, mean? I know what you're saying, Mousy. But DC was it. DC DC is the only one that wasn't manufactured. But yeah, all these yeah. A product cannot be number one without Negro support. A product must have the backing of this big new buying power to be a leader in the field. What are you spending money? This, these niggas was just blowing money and shit and, and leaving everything on. Yeah, man, buying buy trinkets and shit, and then the next generation, they got have shit. Yeah, fuck I it. mean, Have the next job. generation go get their ass a job. What about their own stuff? Yeah, but they needed a leg up because they, they were going to regress to the means, so they needed to have that leg up so that when they did regress the mean it didn't regress so bad chewing gum or cars toothpaste or transportation whatever it is here are millions of prospects and these prospects are everywhere negro customers can no longer be pigeonholed they cannot be classified as prospects who trade only in certain stores certain neighborhoods Today, Negroes shop downtown. They shop in supermarkets. They shop in small neighborhood stores. 
They'll buy from anyone who wants to sell to them. But we all know nice. that before you can sell to customers, you've got to get to know them. You must understand something about them. What do the Negro customers buy? Why do they buy? How do you sell to them? Let's find out. Let's hear the opinion of men who have spent a lifetime studying the buying habits of customers the world over. Here is what sales psychologists have to say about selling to the Negro. The secret of selling to the Negro is expressed in one word. That word is recognition. Now, there's nothing unusual about that. People want to be recognized. They need recognition. That's basic in all of us. But perhaps because he's had so little of it, the Negro needs even more. He needs to feel important and appreciated. <laughs> Just I like seen, today. I've seen this before. This clip right here. Yeah. My niece sent me this clip and it was like, this is how you sell to black people. I'm it's like, true. oh, okay. We got to be recognized. Look at the way we wear clothes. The we'll, we'll wear the same clothes a white person wear in a different way that's more flamboyant. You know what I'm yep. saying? The same brand. We we just we just and then we'll we'll buy the only expensive one. So like if you, you let's just say Amber Crombie and Fitch had one fucking shirt that was like four hundred dollars, that would be the only one that some people only Amber Crombie and Fitch shirt that some people would wear. The four hundred dollar one. They wouldn't wear none of the twenty, thirty, forty dollar ones. Ignition. That's basic in all of us. But perhaps because he's had so little of it, the Negro needs even more. She he like, needs to feel like you and appreciated. This need is a very real and important one. It shows up even in many of the Negro's shopping habits. Anyone who sells or wants to sell to the Negro customer should know about some of these habits. Three habits in particular play a big part in every sales transaction. Three habits, these, these motherfuckers... They had you Negroes down in 1954, man. They knew how to sell to you in 1954. Imagine what they know about what, what the algorithms and shit they got now. They didn't even have algorithms. It's amazing how, like, they kept up with our spinning habits and, you know, they studied us so well back then. But today, when it comes to crime, yeah. it's like they don't have a clue. Yeah, uh, th well, this is more predictable. The, the, the money, the, I mean, listen, man. They, they, they. I think they know us with crime because they, there's no way they don't. I think they just don't put it out there. But this is amazing, man, that they studied us like this in 1954, and it goes to show like why, like how they, you know, they, they, they've been, they've only gotten better at this. So, like right now. Like, if you got a fucking smartphone or a computer, man, they probably shooting shit at you left and right. They said that um, it was a study came out and it was like black people download the Bible app more than any other race in, the, yeah. <laughs> in a country. I was like, Shh, well, we yeah. don't act like we got this junk. We, 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 um, we, we're just like um, visual. We're we're more prone to stimuli. We're more susceptible to stimuli than anybody, any other group. To begin with, most Negroes buy by brand. They ask for products by name. They're quick to turn down off brands. Facts. Like Gucci. Facts. Prada. You'll see a fucking sun man with some Moschino, some Prada, and it's like you don't even fucking know where the fuck he got it from because there's no fucking Prada store anywhere. Remember, they tried to get black people to, uh, I think, boycott Gucci because they had like a black face. Man, yeah. them niggas went and bought even more Gucci after that. The niggas boycotted Gucci for two days and got to look the fuck it, man. It ain't even worth it. We... We love brands, man. We love them. I don't care for them. It's a it's an immediate way to show your your wealth and your value that it's some people, people can see 
no matter where you are. Like if you got money in the like all my money's in investments and looking at me, you wouldn't know I got money. Right. Like if I if I had on like a three thousand dollar suit, you think I got money. It's all external validation. Yeah, exactly. And it's and it's for other sun people. And it's for um you you you're validating yourself. You don't give a fuck what a gladder thinks. You want to you want to impress other sons. Yeah, it's for other black people. We could care less what fishermen think. We don't give a damn <laughs> about yeah. fishermen and his thoughts. We want to know. We want to make sure Ock and Mossy see our Gucci tags and our Louis Vuitton. You no. know. We want to. We want to make sure you you all recognize us. No matter how poor we are, how too. poor, if we live in a hood that Mossy built, it don't even matter. <laughs> Sorry, I wouldn't be able to recognize any uh, any Gucci all that well. I recognize the Walt Tools, uh, or Milwaukee. I recognize that stuff. You're not a. You're not a. You're not a. Um... See, they probably stole it. Nah, I bought myself second hand. They fixed it up play a big part in every sales transaction. To begin with, most Negroes buy by brand. They ask for products by name. They're quick to turn down off brands. Do you wonder why? Well, listen to what this customer is thinking. Hmm. That last hat I bought just didn't hold up at all. You see, for a long time, the Negro has been sold a lot of shoddy, second-class merchandise. So now he asks for name brands in order to make sure he gets his money's worth. Buying by brand, that's the first important Negro buying habit. Now for the second. The Negro buys good quality merchandise. Symbols of quality and prestige are very important to the Negro customer. This woman, for example, is buying fine crystal ware but she is also buying the admiration and approval of her friends and relatives. Listen to her thoughts. My, isn't it beautiful? I can hardly wait to show it to Sally and Joan. It's a well-known fact that many Negro Just customers maybe. are influenced by the opinions of others. What their friends may say. <laughs> we literally what? just said that. Yep. So if he said that today, it would be you know, like, there, there's no way he could say that shit. No way. It's racist, but it's so true. And it's worse now. Approval of her friends and relatives. Listen to her thoughts. My, isn't it beautiful? I can hardly wait to show it to Sally and Joan. It's a well-known fact that many Negro customers are influenced by the opinions of others. What their friends may think of a certain item often decides whether or not the sale is made. So remember... The Negro buys quality merchandise. That's the second important point. And here's the third thing to remember when selling to a Negro customer. When he specifically asks for one thing, don't try to sell him something else. Don't try to. If he asks for some Jordans, man, you better bring You better bring them Jordans. damn shoes back. Because <laughs> yeah, he going to act a, a fool. I used to uh, work in retail. Yeah. Them niggas come in, they want a, a type of shoe. I like you. You sure you do? You want to try? No. Yeah. I just said I want this shoe. Do you have them? They want the one that's gonna be yes. that your friends got. Everybody yes. got. So I don't even do that. Yeah. Okay. So, so this video. I mean, is this saying that the Sun Man is is living beyond his means, or is he just able to afford this type of stuff and he's doing? It? Because I mean, Gladys do it too. Oh. Keeping up with the Joneses. I think is the, what they're saying is that. When it comes down to it, other groups will probably go without this to have other things that are more important or essential to life, such as savings or rainy day and things like that. But the son, man, is this if he has this, he's satisfied. A son, man, who looks fresh, got a fresh outfit on and like a haircut and may got a chain or something. He don't need no fucking savings. That's his savings. He got everything he needs right there in that immediate moment. Cause there's nothing outside of the moment. That's what you have. That's that's the difference with us. We live in the moment. We're the we we 
we we love life. We're like yes, we, we got to live our life now yeah. because tomorrow ain't promised, so, especially in the sun. Well, the sun man would rather buy a six hundred dollar chain rather than a six hundred dollar washer and dryer. Oh, without a doubt. I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Here's the thing: if if a sun man had a washer and dryer and it was janky, and it, it was time to get a new one. Or the or the technology of that washer and dryer he had was outdated, and there was new technology that was more efficient, like maybe save water, we saved on the water bill, less gallons of water were used, and it and it and it, and it um washed the clothes uh, what twenty percent or thirty percent faster, and the clothes were you know were um treated more delicately by the machine or whatever. And he had a he had one that worked. It was sufficient. He still put the clothes in there and they got washed, but it's janky and it's outdated. And he got six hundred dollars with this ninety-nine percent chance that he's gonna spend that six hundred dollars on something other than getting the new wash. It's almost a nine to me, to the people I know, it's a ninety-nine. Now across the board, maybe ninety or eighty-five percent. But the niggas I know is a 99% chance. They're not buying no fucking... They're not spending something on something that's abstract. That washing machine is abstract. You already got one. So, yeah. I think I think, I think think that's a, a, a very, very high chance. And to switch him at the point of sale. If you do, he'll probably react something like this. Doesn't he think I've got the money to pay for it? There's a reason for this reaction. Again, because he's had experience with cheap merchandise, the Negro resents being offered a substitute. He wants to be sold on quality, not price. The Negro buys by brand, he buys quality, and he doesn't like to be switched at point of sale. These are the keys to selling the Negro customer. Another point, the Negro family does things together as a group. The family works as a unit. It lives as a unit and it buys as a unit. When you sell to one member, boy, things have changed. <laughs> God, oh. Shit, the changed right there, Jack. But it's still true for those families. This is intact. Yeah, definitely, but it's the, the, the volume of those families in change. Many times sell to all. It's also true that many places of entertainment are still closed to the Negro. So he spends more of his money for the things that are available to him, often for items that are considered luxuries. Another trait of the Negro market is the fact that it is a pre-sold market. We know that the Negro buys by brand. And he buys the brands that he knows something about. Where does the Negro buyer get this information? We know that Negro customers are turning more and more to the publications that are tailored specifically to their needs, that give them the news and the information that they want to read about. Many leading businessmen and companies already know this. That's why so many of them are taking this direct, sure route of reaching the Negro customer. The vice president of advertising of the Gruen Watch Company, for example, says this. In many important cities throughout the United States, Negroes are important customers of the credit tube. Therefore, it seemed that Ebony Magazine would be a very important advertising medium for us. We would say it was very well received. And from our viewpoint of... Ebony was like black Twitter. <laughs> very successful campaign. From the Remington Rand Company comes this statement. Our records show that advertising in Ebony has been effective in many ways. As all good advertising should, it has built a terrific amount of goodwill and has brought a volume of sales and sales inquiries. A representative of the Allega Syrup Company makes this statement. Because of Alaga's regard for the influence of ebony in the Negro market, advertising space was doubled. Alaga's long experience in selling to Negroes now takes the most direct route to its best customers. 
reaching Ebony's two and a half million audience in every issue. And here are the statements of still other business leaders. Yes, many business leaders are discovering the most direct and most efficient way of reaching the new Negro market. Look here at the results of the same advertisement in two different publications, Ebony and another general magazine. You can see that proportionately, more men and women read the ad in Ebony than the one in the other magazine. And they did a better job of remembering it, too. A greater percentage of readers noted, associated, and remembered the ad in Ebony. But now, wait a minute. If the Negro market is so big and easy to reach, why aren't more companies going out after it? Well, often because of the feeling that there's something entirely different unusual about selling to the Negro. But is it really so different? What do salesmen say? The successful salesmen who do a good job of selling in Negro communities. How do you go about getting the order? How do I get the order? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't do anything. <laughs> anything different, that is. I've been calling on these accounts long enough to know that the Negro just wants to be treated like everybody else. No matter who you're calling on, a little friendliness and courtesy help a lot. But naturally, anybody resents being patronized or talked down to. So I usually call a man Mr. Brown, Mr. Smith, or Mr. whatever his name is, until he tells me to call him by his first name. And of course, I always stick to business. I stay away from talk about race or religion or politics. That goes for talk about Negro celebrities, too. You know, this business about what good prize fighters and singers the Negroes are. Who cares? When a guy's in business. Wow, even back then, they would know for entertainment. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So, just the way these corporations in the 50s here perfected the way to sell to the Sun Man, um, the Democrats have perfected the way to mm. sell to the Sun Man with their votes, to get their votes. And their product is oppression and racism. And it works the every more, time. Yeah. The more they can sell them that, the more votes they're going to get or currency they're going to get, their, the, their money they're going to get. Yeah, exactly. things that are in your face. Yeah, things that are in your face. They don't talk to the Sun Man about economics. They don't talk to the Sun Man about, you know what I'm saying, the, um, abstract things that are that are not in your face they talk to the sun man about that fucking white man's race that care and that fucking person that cop things that are like just right there in front of you um and that's yeah that's that's kind of like it's the same thing it's the same um goddamn um train of thought no matter what color his skin is he's interested in making a living in making money that's uppermost in his mind. I guess maybe what I'm saying is that I try to help any way I can. Sometimes with displays or ad materials or an idea once in a while. The important thing is that if it helps push sales for the dealer, it helps push them for me, too. Hmm. Handle the Negro account just like any of your others. Don't patronize. Stick to business. Get interested in the account. Pitch in and help any way you can. Sounds like pretty good sales advice. That's the secret of selling the Negro. Well, how about it? What do you think of this new market? It can open new outlets for you and for everybody who sells goods or services. It's still possible to get in on the ground floor when this market is just beginning to grow and to expand. The facts and the figures that we see here are just a small sample of what they promise to be next year and the years after that. Yes, here are men and women with money to spend, and they spend it for exactly the same things as you and I and everyone else. They buy almost every type of product and service that you have to offer, and they can be reached like everyone else through publications that appeal to their interests and desires, that deliver the kind of loyal readership that can be proved both in surveys and in down-to-earth sales. Here is a ready-made market waiting to be asked to buy.
Here are millions of customers for what you have to sell. Cust Salute to the Sun Man, man. Sun Man, um, yeah. Man. That was the last of his kind. Yeah, that didn't, that, that, that is over. No more black men like him. I hear me who, who the recipient of this video was made for. Like, this. This was sent out to like some corporations or well they didn't have the internet back then so this when when everyone you had three channels a lot of people would have seen this because everybody would have you know what i'm saying it, there's not like cable there's not amazon prime there's not you know what i'm saying netflix there ain't fucking you know all these channels and shit it's three channels back in those days so that so you think it was on like primetime tv well, I think if not, if it was, if it was, if it was, um, if it was a documentary, and it was, it was, what form would they put it on? You didn't have VHS, you didn't have anything. Maybe I don't know. Um, no. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it was, but however, whatever it was, it would have had to been in a, a form where um, a lot of people could see it because there wouldn't be. Right. any private it, there wouldn't be any way to view things other than live tv they didn't have beta or vhs yet and if it was on prime time i wonder how i wonder how some some people reacted to it if they were offended if they were no wonder, they probably weren't know, offended they would have been like, like how he was saying yep yeah. that's us yeah talk talk like it's, it's it's just like some people feel would have felt honored that anything on tv was about them back in those days if there was one black character in a fucking movie and he's the fucking butler or the maid black people was happy about that shit now fucking goddamn they gonna make superman black and shit man they is probably so man i mean i don't know that no fucking superman. well they were they were considering it because they were gonna get Tanehasi Coates to write it. Oh, um, God. But they went with a different direction, and now they're. Ooh, thank they're God. Yeah. Thank God. Um, thank the Lord they went in a different direction, man. Um, I want to show y'all this before I get.